everybody welcome back to another java tutorial in this video i'm going to show you java method overloading but first if you're new here my name is alex on this channel i post a java tutorial just like this one every single week so if you might be interested in seeing that then consider subscribing i also have free tips on how to think like a programmer in the description down below so let's start learning about java method overloading by just making a new project together we'll call it something like my project hit finish and then in the source folder go to new class and we'll call it something just like my class. Hit this public static void main checkbox and then hit finish. Method overloading just means that you can have multiple methods with the same exact name, but just different parameters. So let's start practicing that by just starting off making one method together, and then we'll repeat that same name and just change some parameters. So let's make a method here that say adds two numbers together. Um, it'll be public. We wanna call it from the main method a little easier, so we'll just make it static it'll return an integer and it's called add numbers and then in these parentheses we'll just add two integers just for this example int a and int b and we'll return a plus b now to use this method we just created we just go up here and say add numbers and then pick two numbers since this is returning an integer, we can't just, you know, expect this to just print to the console. We have to store that result into a variable and we'll just call result. And then we have to print it out ourselves. So we'll just print it out. Okay, save and run. And we see five gets printed out as we expect. And this is great for integers. But what if we wanted to have an add numbers method that did it for doubles or floats or wanted to add three numbers together? And that's where method overloading comes into play because we can just copy this, copy and paste it. And instead of integers, we can just change it to doubles so that we can do um, periods. So doubles just means you can do decimal points. Integers is whole numbers. We'll change this to return a double and it'll work exactly the same way. So let's maybe have result one and result two. We'll add 3.1 and 2.7. We'll print out result one and result two. Result two is actually a double now. So if we save and run this, we're printing result one twice. This needs to be result two. You'll see now it works for doubles. So even though these are the exact same method name, Java knows the difference because of what values are inside of the parentheses. And that's all method overloading is. It's super easy. Let's say we want to do one with three integers, copy and paste. Let's add an int C in here. And we'll return A plus B plus C. Result three will be three plus two plus five. And we'll print out result three. And you get the idea here. It knows that this add numbers method is different than this add numbers method, which is different than this one because of the values inside. It matches them up to the correct method. So whenever you hear Java method overloading, that means you can have multiple methods with the same name, just different parameters. Now let's do one last example. This one will be pretty fun. Let's have no values in the parentheses. Let's just make public static int add numbers with nothing inside. Now we might be thinking, well, what numbers will we add? Well, let's add some maybe random numbers. You can do that with the random class. So just do this random, we'll call it R equals new random. This is a class in Java that helps us generate random numbers. To use it, hover over it and click import java.util random class and we'll return. Actually, you know what? Let's make this um let's make this a uh, void. It won't return anything. We'll just print out uh, to the console just so you to show you that, you know, method overloading is flexible. It doesn't have to always return something. It works like any other method. So let's print out Maybe one random number generated. To do a random number between, I think, 0 and 5, you do r.next int 
and then we'll do six at the top. So it stops at six, it generates a random number between zero and five. That always kind of confused me. And we'll just add another one of those randomly generated numbers, save it, and then here we will call it, we'll do add numbers with no parameters. So it knows to call this one, save and run. And then it generates two random numbers and adds them together, which is pretty cool. So each time when you run it, you'll get different numbers. See how many times you can run it until you get the number 10, just for fun. Also, in case you were wondering, um, since these are called static, we can call the method like this. But a quick little tip is if the static wasn't here, if you wanted to call it, see it's not working. You make your class just like any other object in Java. You name it. So this name is just the name of your class up here. And then you just do that name dot to bring up the method. Save run and it's working. Also this one um, is printing out like this because of how doubles round certain things. So if this was 3.12 and 2.71, you'll get a prettier value. So I hope this was helpful. Again, method overloading just means the same exact method name, just different parameters. It can have three, it can have two, it can have 50. That wouldn't be a great method though. And it can have zero. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.